Good morning guys, welcome back, to, welcome back to another video. Welcome back to the first person perspective. Johnny's not here today, he is unfortunately sick. That just means that they have a day to finally work on the Porsche. Me and Jonathan's been so backed up working on the F90 M5 uh, that we're parting out. I don't know if we already uploaded that video before or afterwards, but these parts were literally kept on adding up, adding up, adding up, which is an absolute blessing that came off that car. There's so many parts that came off that car um, because a car like that, you wanna take absolutely everything off of it, including frame rails, literally frame pieces, a bunch of plastics, literally everything. But I'm happy to say that we pretty much have everything we need to hopefully theoretically get this thing running and driving. Now, I don't know if we're gonna be able to get it running and driving properly because this thing does need to be bled and pressurized for the cooling system. But I might actually have a friend that can help us with that. We did get the tools from FCP Euro, and we also got all of our fluids kind of just chilling there like a villain. We also have some door cards, dashboard, other things like that. And again, like I said, we got a lot of parts that finally came in for the Cayman. Um, it's been honestly a mission finding these parts and also a mission to just start working on this car. Just because again, like to be able to have this place, we have to do business stuff to be able to actually enjoy this on the side time, which we haven't really been having a lot of side time. But long story short, man, this camera lens is getting kind of heavy. <laughs> this is Jonathan's lens, it's kind of heavy. We're finally able to work on the Cayman, which I am super excited about. I think in the last video, we actually left off over here. I'm um, just showing you guys the damages that happened to this car. Super, super, super happy that none of these mounting points and brackets were damaged from the accident, which is an, honestly an absolute shocker and uh, is an absolute blessing. Even the, the impact didn't even come as far back as this frame rail. Um, there's a few scratches, stuff like that from the actual uh, fender hitting it, but no bends, no nothing. Everything should mount like OEM, which I'm super happy about. The hood as well is undamaged. Literally, I think they peeled up this clear bar right over here to expose this one scratch. So that's literally nothing. We're just gonna leave that because that, that little scratch is like a rock. All the lines and everything in front of here are in absolutely perfect shape. And I'm just really excited to get this thing on all four wheels, fix up suspension, new coolers, all that good stuff, and just get it to where it's at least running and driving. We ended up picking up a brand new battery um, from AutoZone. Batteries are honestly getting very expensive, guys. $180 is what it used to be, which I thought was kind of expensive. Nowadays, this battery is $280 plus taxes and core and all that other good stuff. Life is just getting expensive. Not just the Porsche life, the life. But I think the first thing I wanna do is actually just do this battery because that means the Cayman will have full power, which is something we never had before. Cold start, let's do it. So just like that guys, brand new battery in there, fully mounted. I used all the brackets and stuff like that. Sometimes on BMWs, I don't put the brackets back because I know I'm gonna go in there a million times, but on a Porsche, you wanna do everything properly. By the way, I also found the headlight, killer deal. That being said, we have the key. We have a new battery out with the old chilling right over there. It's only a two year old battery, but maybe because the car was sitting at the auction for a little bit um, with the two year old battery kind of killed it. Um, so I'm hoping that was the case. I can't find anything online about a pyro fuse on this car, so I don't really think it has one. So without further ado, let's go ahead and give you guys a cold startup. So you guys heard that. I didn't really want to give it much of a rev right now because it does have a little bit of a ticking sound, but I do think that is no big deal. And uh, that clear bra may need replacing as well. I just noticed that. But anyways, that is honestly really, really good news. I started up the car. Um, it honestly, all the lights went away. It just had a TPMS light, which obviously uh, that rear tire is completely blown out on the, the passenger side and the front tire is completely off the car. And it also had a headlight fault and uh, that's about it. So that's looking pretty good. I believe it also had the airbag light, but that's because almost every airbag was deployed on this car. The dashboard, two new airbags, and the steering wheel airbag. So we are gonna be replacing those, but just not yet. The main thing I wanna focus on is just getting this thing on the ground with the cooling system fully in order. So let's just go ahead and start working on that. So showing you guys some of the new parts that I ended up getting. Um, I ended up picking up this new to me used crash bar. No damage, no damage to the foam, no damage whatsoever to the bar. Again, ours had very minimal damage that will still be able to resell. But for this car, again, I'm trying to perfect absolutely everything like I do with most of my rebuilds. So I went ahead and just picked up one without any damage whatsoever. Now this right over here is the whole assembly, even though I only really need this control arm back there. The only control that honestly snapped was the one chilling right back there. Everything else, honestly, this one 
right over here, the tie rod is absolutely perfect. This control arm, absolutely perfect, super straight. Literally only one control arm was bent. Even the sway bar end link, which I don't know if you guys can see, is not even damaged. Now looking right over here at the strut, to me, it does look like it's a little bent. So that being said, I'm gonna have to actually remove this strut and replace it with this one. I'm hoping they're the same. Picked up this entire assembly right over here for only a hundred bucks. Somebody really just didn't want this. I was like, hey man, this has been sitting in my backyard for years and I just want it gone. I was like, for a hundred bucks, I mean, I'll take it. So if we could actually replace our strut and that control arm down there, theoretically, everything should line up absolutely perfectly. I mean, especially considering that we don't even need to touch tie rods, which is the main adjustment point. And I think that control arm down there has to do with alignment. So we definitely will need alignment regardless. Also over here, there's a lot of play in the shock tower. You can pretty much adjust it inwards, outwards. So I think that's an adjusting point. That's an adjusting point. So regardless, we're gonna need an alignment, but at least it'll be able to drive straight, which would be nice. Guys, I really, I really hope my luck doesn't end on this Porsche, but so far I'm absolutely loving it. Remember that hub I showed you guys? I bought the whole thing for a hundred bucks and all it really came with, it didn't come with the tie rod, it didn't come with the other control arm, but what it did come with was a perfectly good shock. It came with a, as you can see, that's completely disintegrated. That shock's completely bent and that sway bar end link is completely bent. It came with a good sway bar end link right over here, which I need apparently. I didn't know that, but now I know. Um, I need a shock, which this was questionable, but after pulling it out, Definitely know it's bad, so you know, I got that from there. And then also I needed this control arm. And then I noticed that this thing, the, the, the headlight level sensor thing is like snapped. I'm like, dang, where am I gonna find this bracket? On the control arm that came with that whole assembly, it came with the bracket. So, I mean, I literally should have everything to reassemble. I'm not gonna jinx myself just yet, but um, I'm so far super happy. This is just, this is just working out. Normally I have, I'm probably have built probably like 40 cars, 50 cars in my life. And I can guarantee you guys, I, this has never happened to me. So on a personal vehicle, feels good, feels good. And just like that guys, lo and behold, this is beauty. Man, eBay's going off right now. <laughs> This is looking so, so, so good. This is absolutely straight. We got the brand new control arm on there. We finally got the uh, level sensor on there perfectly as well. We got the new tie rod end link. We also have the new shock and it's sitting just absolutely beautifully. So that's gonna absolutely be perfect. We can actually drive the car in and out of the shop now. Now speaking of running and driving the car, we do need to mount our new coolers. So I went ahead and picked up the whole cooler assembly, fully assembled together. And I also picked up some brackets off of eBay as well. Um, so I believe a bracket mounts over here and one over here and I think one over here, that's all one piece right there. Now, somebody told me that this is sp something supposed to be over here. From what I saw, nothing was mounted over here when I moved the old uh, cooler. So I'm not really too sure if something's supposed to mount there. I mean, obviously it looks like something was there, but I'm not sure what that is. So let's just go ahead and install the cooler and see whatever that is, if it's necessary. So guys, I got absolutely railed. Uh, something I just learned about this car is that this section right over here is worth more than the engine. This frame from right here to right here, this section right over here is worth more than the engine itself. That's called the tub, you live and you learn. I know a lot of my friends that's actually just thrown out this front tub as part of the frame, not thinking that's really worth much, but little did they know that that's actually worth more than the engine. And the reason why I found that out is because this little bracket right over here that was welded on there or riveted on there, that's part of the frame. You cannot purchase that from Porsche. That's just something you're gonna have to find off a wrecked car. And if they're willing to sell it, uh, especially considering if they're selling the tub, they want it complete. You have to find one that has a wrecked tub and that guy has it and is willing to remove that. That's gonna be super hard to find. I think one of you guys mentioned that in a past video. I didn't really think much of it. I was like, no way, that's a real thing. It's a real thing. It's a Porsche, Porsche problems. Bada bing, bada bang. I thought by ordering those two other brackets, I'll be good to go. Boy, was I wrong. Anyways, more Porsche issues to kind of deal with right now. But before actually getting into all those, I might as well put on the wheel and finally put this thing on all fours. The car does run and drive. It's just unfortunately, I don't want to mount the coolers. If it was just radiators, I'll use literally the two mounting screws and then kind of zip tie it to the fender and call it a day if it's literally just two radiators because I'm not dumping $6,000 on a bracket. It's just not going to happen. That's insane. But because this radiator assembly also has a 
fan in the back of it, that momentum is just gonna break everything if I don't have the proper bracket. So I need, I need to make sure I get that thing either welded up or I gotta figure out somebody willing to sell that to me. So that is a huge setback. I hope I, I wish I found out about that sooner so I could have been working on that till I got to this video. You guys are learning with me. We all knew to Porsche, we're learning something. Something I'm also kind of learning about, the front trunk, it's working. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Rear trunk. Nothing. Rear wing. Nothing. So apparently there is a module that controls the rear wing. I couldn't figure that out. I thought it was the battery and it turns out the battery killed a fuse potentially. Now I've got to find the fuse box on this thing so I can get to the trunk. Potentially there are some parts in this trunk but I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. I'm hoping because I, I, don't, I don't remember seeing that bracket. I'm hoping that bracket's in the trunk. Even destroyed, I could probably get it reused. Um, so potentially there's something in here that could be saving me $6,000. Uh, not that I'm ever gonna be spending that kind of money, but it's worth a shot and it's worth fixing because uh, we need to get it fixed regardless. So let's go ahead and get a wheel on this car, get this thing back on the ground and figure out a way to get to that trunk. So I've been honestly just spending the last hour going through the fuses on this side and the fuses on that side. I don't know if you guys can see that. Basically, I cannot find the fuse for this. All the fuses seem to be good. I don't even know. That. There's no fuse diagram that comes with this car. So long story short, I'm going to figure out if there's a third fuse box. So good news guys, the side skirt came off fairly easily and uh, unfortunately it is clear broad, which kind of sucks because now we have to get a re-clear broad to match the other side, but damage is damage. It's okay that just the side skirt got damaged. It's actually repairable as well. There's no frame damage whatsoever. There's literally zero frame damage on this car. Um, it was literally just a bracket, which makes me feel so, so, so happy about this purchase. Do have a lead on that bracket. I hit up a friend of mine, a good friend of mine at Foreign Builds, and he said that potentially he might have that bracket. So not him personally, but he might have somebody that can get me that bracket. So shout out to him uh, for helping me out with that. They're the guys in NorCal. If you have trouble rebuilding a car, you should reach out to them and have them rebuild it for you because honestly, their work is absolutely phenomenal. They're the ones that actually helped put together my brother's M4CS when I was stumped on it. So shout out to them. Now that we got the suspension fully sorted, we have the crash bar on the car. We have the side skirt removed and off to the paint shop. All the airbags cut out and uh, we did a little bit of diagnosing for the trunk and whatnot. I'll get back to you guys Monday, hopefully with an update on this cooler because I really want to get that on the car so we can actually drive it because as soon as we get that cooler on it this car is officially a run and drive car even if the airbags are deployed that does not matter in terms of the airbags we do have the dashboard airbag um which is great the steering wheel i plan on upgrading the steering wheel to the 982 shadow line i believe it's some kind of shadow line metal steering wheel which was absolutely phenomenal with the new airbag because that airbag is blown and we need knee airbags we need seat buckles tensioners all that good stuff so the interior needs a lot of work that's probably going to be in a whole video in itself just because of how much work that is and i still need to get a few more pieces Pieces. So that being said, I'll see you guys when I see you guys. And welcome back guys to another day. Finally, finally, finally back with the Porsche. Um, this is honestly about four or five days later after working on getting the whole wheel assembly on there, removing the side skirt, taking it to my paint guy and the body guy. This little bracket right here, guys, took me a week to find. And I'm not going to lie to you guys, it was the only one on eBay. If I could slow up a screenshot somewhere over here, it was the only one on eBay, the only one on Google. Um, this one was actually purchased through a third party company in China. Um, and this guy basically ordered two of them. He used on one on his car. He didn't end up using the other, one, the other one from the other side. I think he actually needed the passenger side and he didn't need the driver's side. Uh, he said, they, these are discontinued. You can't buy them anywhere. Um, long story short, I got crazy lucky. Crazy lucky, he was even local. I met up with him, picked it up. We had a whole chat about this thing. So long story short, this piece is not sold at the dealer. To buy this piece, you need to buy the entire tub or that frame rail, um, which is basically $6,000 at the dealer to have this little bracket that holds your cooler. So long story short, I am so lucky that I actually got this. I did call off a bunch of my rebuilding guys to see if they actually had a tub, a damaged tub that they're willing to sell me this piece off of, but no one actually had a damaged tub and no one wants to actually cut this piece off because it's welded on um, from their original tub that's actually good. That being said, finally guys, finally guys, I got that piece. Let's go ahead and try to get it installed. Because this thing was welded on there, or I believe riveted on there, we're gonna go ahead and draw out those rivets and add new rivets. So uh, that being said, without further ado, let's just go ahead and get that done. Oh.
The good news guys, I finally got the three holes drilled out that honestly took a very long time for some reason. But anyways, now that that's finally done, it's finally time to actually go ahead and grab the bracket, line up the same holes. Unfortunately, um, there isn't any holes on this one. So we do have to drill out four holes, uh, get this bracket on here and then rivet the four nuts on there. Thankfully, I do have four metal nuts. These, I believe I got them off a BMW airbag, current airbag. So these are actually gonna be very, very, very sturdy, very good. And then this should theoretically support our radiator support just like that. And we can go ahead and put a screw through there and then it will be rock solid. So super excited for that. Let's go ahead without further ado and get this bad boy installed. And lo and behold guys, thank the Lord that bracket is on there. That thing is not going anywhere. That's super sturdy. So theoretically now, I can actually plug in my cooler, put in the three bolts in the bottom, put in the bolt through there. I still need to find a bolt that goes through there. But long story short, theoretically, if everything goes according to plan, that is gonna finally get mounted. Oh my lord, guys, that actually worked. I literally just set it on and I actually put the two bolts in the bottom and reconnect everything. And theoretically, we should be good to go. So guys, finally, 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 we have the, the adapter. I don't know if you guys can see that in there. It is holding the radiator assembly. Look at this. It's not going anywhere. So the two <laughs> screws down there, the upper bracket finally, all the hoses are connected, the front AC lines are connected. Now, technically, if we go ahead, we have to do the proper bleeding slash pressurizing the cooling system. This thing should be a running and driving car, which is very, very, very exciting news. So that's all done. Now we're gonna go ahead. I'm gonna give it another day or two to get the rest of the parts in so I can kind of test fit the fender, test fit the headlight, potentially test fit the front bumper that we got. And then we're gonna be setting it off to paint. So I'll get back to you guys when that happens. And also potentially when my boy comes over and helps us actually pressurize the system. He's done some Porsches before. I've never done that. So uh, he's gonna help us out with that because uh, it's not like you can just pour cool. So we'll come back to you guys when he's here. So guys, a few days later, and finally, I finally have all this stuff here. But most importantly, I got my boy Alex. He's finicky through the car right now, trying to figure out how to open this trunk. Uh, he's like, Nor, uh, yeah, just real quick. Can you pop the trunk? I was like, man, I've had an issue with this trunk since day one. So you can hear it unlock or try to unlock, but it won't unlock. The actuator. So I don't know what's going on back here. Even this rear wing doesn't want to go up either. So that is super annoying. But anyways, we do have all of our stuff right here from FCP Air. So shout out to them. What we got chilling right over here is the actual cooling system uh, thingy McBobber. This is the tool we actually need to put in the coolant. So this isn't like your typical BMW where you just pour coolant and then you, you know, do the, the automatic bleeding procedure. You got to actually bleed it yourself. So that's kind of annoying and uh, it requires a special tool. I have no experience with this, so that's why I got my boy Alex over here. He's gonna help us out with that. We also got some new wiper blades, uh, some sway bar end links, just because I think mine are shot. Um, so we do have those, some coolant, and like I said, the tool. So again, special shout out to FCP Euro. If you guys need any maintenance things, make sure to check them out. They got that lifetime warranty, so that's always a huge plus. But without further ado, let's go ahead, get into this trunk some way or somehow. You guys can see I'm just chilling right there. <laughs> and uh, just start this bleeding procedure. Because once you actually do that, um, even though it's not really fully put together, this thing will finally be able to run and drive without actually having to worry about any engine issues happening. Because right now, it literally has no cooling. Hey, let's go. Sneaky. Finally, bro. Guys, check yeah. that out. That's crazy. So it's right here. When you, and it's actually kind of nice. As soon as you pop it, you just use this and you pull it. Oh, you, that, that's out. Let's leave parts. that out then. Yeah. Guys, we got, let me show you what we got in here real quick. Actually, let me check this out first. More shop towels. Uh, oh wait, okay, there's that. So we got some free shop towels, some Porsche, all season, floor mats. That actually looks pretty good, not gonna lie. Nothing else in there. I actually like those cubbies, it's kind of sick. I yeah, know, it's pretty cool. I was like looking at it. It's actually a decent amount of luggage room considering that this engine's literally right over here. The thing is the i8 that I had, kind of a similar layout. But the engine, like there, no, there was no trunk. The exact same guy, because I, I, engine cover is right here. Yeah. And you got the cubby right here. Yeah, so it's like, kind of the same layout. Actually, why does this go under? You see that? Oh, that's true. That's weird. Oh man, this rich is what, this is yeah, rich people thing right here. You got covers for your cap and then that's cool. So that's pretty sick. So we're gonna leave that open right now. So that's pretty sick. That's where we're actually gonna be loading up our coolant right over there. Um, You actually got the tool out. You mind explaining to them how this thing works? Yeah, basically, so the way this works is you hook up an air compressor, it's actually, super simple air goes in right here you have this valve that opens and closes air goes into the system right here it acts it's weird how it goes in and it comes kind of back out so you have to open the valve and once it, you open the valve the air kind of escapes but sucks the coolant back in so no air goes inside the car but coolant goes in the car so it make, it's weird but complicated yeah uh when mechanics say it's uh it's easy it's easy but 
Yeah, it's gonna get let's, the job let's done. Let's see you use it. Let's see <laughs> yeah. you use it. Yeah. I think it's I think show. Let's do that. Let's do that. Cat goes there. Oh wow, that is like. Yeah, it's super simple. Tool goes a, in. I thought it was gonna be a huge hole right there. Okay. Tool goes in. Oil, oil one's huge. Oh, oil one's huge. Okay. <laughs> tool goes in. Air gets hooked up. Bottle of coolant goes right here. Basically, air goes in, and then once you're ready, open this valve. No air goes basically back in the system. Coolant just gets sucked in, and you call it a day. That's basically the best way to do it. <laughs> There's not much more to it. So let's go ahead and run it. So we do have an air compressor. You guys do need an air compressor for this job. You do know you need the special tool, obviously. I got all this from FCP Euro, and then we got a coolant as well. This was the coolant that they had on their website when I went ahead and uh, put the category uh, for Porsche 981. So I'm not sure if that's definitely not Porsche fluids, but I'm sure it's going to work just as good because everything FCP Euro sells is good. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and just get this job over with. <laughs> So guys, we got the cooling system fully sorted. Honestly, we had to do it off camera because we're having a little bit of issues with the tool and our air compressor. It turns out you need a much bigger air compressor, so he had to bring that in the middle of the night. We got that sorted. So now the car is a running and driving car. Huge bonus. So now that the cooling system and everything is good, um, I don't know if you guys saw earlier in the video, we did remove the side skirt. We took it over to our frame guy for some repairs. We are gonna be test fitting on this fender and the headlight, and then hopefully, actually we have a bumper as well but we're just gonna be test fitting these parts and then uh, getting this thing sent off to paint. Once it gets back from paint, we'll do the uh, new bumper conversion, get that thing painted as well. Uh, but long story short, let's just test out this fender. Hopefully it's the right fender. <laughs> I literally got this off Facebook, bro. Well, time to test it. Time to test it, dude. So we gotta shove this in here. That's a massive spider there just crawling <laughs> through this. Oh, that's beautiful. Careful, over here. Oh, is it hidden? Yeah. I think it's the right fender. You just, you gotta place it. I really gotta put it the fitment, huh? Yeah. Looks like it. Well, that looks good, kind of. Right now? Pretty good. Let's get in there. That's pretty good, actually. That looks pretty, actually, that looks fantastic. Yeah, not bad. All the screw holes are finally lined up. There you go. So, I mean, It actually looks pretty good. All right then. That was easier. Oh, it does look like that one. Actually, the gaps are really tight on these cars. I didn't. I did not know that. So actually, that's it's factory it. gap. Yeah. Oh, nice. No rubs. That's good. So that works out pretty good. This fender just. Oh man, that's not a good color. <laughs> so I have to with black. And then here is our new headlight that we ended up copping. New to us. New to us, but use headlight. Just be careful the fender doesn't fall. That's a good point. <laughs> Don't want it to scratch anything else. Slap that in there. I mean, it looks right. Yeah. That looks proper. Should be good. It looks pretty good, Ooh! bro. It's coming to life. Coming along, boys. So if we come around to the front end of the car, it looks fan freaking tastic. Dang. We need a GT4 upgraded bumper and we're good to go. Uh, it does need a lot of airbags and a bunch of other stuff to get done to this car. But we'll be doing that hopefully in the next video as well. So next video I want to get done is paint. I want to get all the panels painted, all the panels back on the car. I want to get the GT4 pump bumper. It's right over there. It has a million kazillion pieces. So that has to be like a dedicated video because we have to pretty much redo the whole front end and then put on the bumper and then get that thing painted. So uh, it has like new air ducts, new grills, new mounting, new skid plates, new everything. It's like a full kit from Keys Motorsports. So shout out to them for that. But anyways, it's looking fantastic. Super happy on everything that's kind of coming along so far. Nothing structurally with this car was damaged to begin with. So uh, thankfully we didn't have to play with the hood gaps. The hood is staying on there. So far so good, right? Yeah, looks good. I just kind of show you guys a little bit of a teaser. Uh, Cause you already know I'm trying to do the whole GT4 theme. If you guys check out that steering wheel, that's gonna go. I already got a 982 steering wheel on the way. Uh, dashboard's getting replaced. Door cards are getting replaced. Let me show you guys with what exactly. So right over here, this bad boy is a gt4 alcantara door card look at this pull strap a That's functional crazy. pull strap bro that is so <laughs> sick so super excited with these two door cards we got both alcantara um a little bit dirty but uh, we'll get that cleaned up not a big deal um so yeah anyways this little pull strap right over here i want to do a yellow theme in the interior of the car so i did find a company on etsy that sells yellow pull straps is this guy right over here in case you guys are wondering uh i give him a free promotion right here uh but it's the only person i could find that actually sells 
uh, you know, custom straps. This is, he runs a really good business, FYI, because it looks like he just got some kind of fabric and just measured the holes perfectly. <laughs> like, not even perfectly, look at that. <laughs> so, I mean, like, kind of funny. it's good business. It's good business. I paid like 30, 40 bucks for these, which are pretty cheap, but I'm sure he probably cost them- Not that much. What, four or five bucks? Plus <laughs> Maybe, not even. <laughs> $3 shipping, so That's good fine, business though. for him That's to fine. have. And you guys can kind of see the results, how it's gonna look in the end. That's gonna look fantastic. Yeah, so pretty good. super happy about that. We're gonna be slapping those on the door cards um, and then getting that in the interior, swapping out the dashboard. That's all gonna be in one video. I wanna get the whole interior knocked out. And then we're gonna try to get a 982 steering wheel with a yellow stripe, um, like Alcantara, all the good stuff. I'm gonna try to get that. I'm trying to find one. I think when I say it's on the way. So I got an Alcantara airbag, which was super hard to find. And then the steering wheel itself, I got in contact with somebody that's selling it. But uh, long story short, he's out of stock and I'm just waiting for him to restock on that and then we can finally get that ordered. So that being said, almost done on that. Parts on the Porsche has been so hard to get, bro. It is hard it to is. get. <laughs> What's crazy for those of you guys who don't know much about Porsches or Caymans, this is pretty much Porsche's entry level sports car. It like, is. yeah, there's the Cayman and then there's Cayman S, which is this one. Uh, but like, even if you look up Cayman S's or Caymans, bro, there's like what? 15 within there's not that many for sale anywhere like in california there's like 15 total for sale on car girls yeah and when you put much. in like m3 for example which is a limited production car compared to the majority of the cars like the 320s or 335s or 340s um there's like 80 or 100 of them within you know california actually even more maybe yeah there's a um, lot so from where we, from bmws to porsche uh, the entry and I, actually why am i comparing to an m3 I'm, let's compare it to like a 328 yeah. right yeah there's a thousand or 1500 yeah listed compared, on car girls compared to like, compared 15. To like 15 of them yeah you know? so porsches are so much harder to get parts on um it's absolutely ridiculous yeah things are just taking time but it's all great in the navy so we'll catch you guys hopefully in the next video getting this thing painted it's gonna be super exciting and getting all these gt4 parts on there if you guys are excited for that make sure to smash the like button but without further ado love you all so much remember to stay humble see you on the next one peace out uh, back on deck on my fly uh, really on really on my